So welcome back to this week's book review. This week's book is Legacy, 15 Lessons in Leadership by James Kerr. So I kind of picked this book this week in particular because I've been recently just finished it, obviously, but I've also been listening to it kind of keeps in line with uh, Ross Edgley's Art of Resilience. So that was the first book review we did last week. So if you didn't check that, go have a look at that one. So this kind of book, I think, is very applicable because it kind of keeps in the tone of that book as well. But it also is very, very useful for coaches and athletes. So necessarily, when you look at this book first, you might think 15 lessons in leadership. It's kind of aimed at the business entrepreneur manager kind of uh, crowd, but it also works very, very well in terms of coaches, you know. But a lot of the lessons that they implement, so it goes through the system of what they were teaching those athletes and what the All Blacks went through in terms of how developing themselves into one of the best rugby teams in the world. Bill Williams into space for Barrett, had too much pace for Arm. Back on this side, inside to Goodyear. They couldn't run him down. The All Blacks strike out of nowhere. And so those lessons are very, very applicable to athletes listening, so that's kind of one of the reasons I picked this book as well. So if you're any kind of athlete looking to increase your performance or you're a coach trying to increase your athlete's performances and implement these lessons, I would definitely, definitely go look at this book. Um, there's a couple of things, pros and cons of this book though. So big pro with this book, right, is that the information in the book is phenomenal. So it's great information. It's very, very useful. If you listen to our podcast, for example, you would have listened to a lot of the kind of the concepts we talk about, you know, trying to make everything better, the most optimal you can, you know, Clicker talks on mindset, so Fitz has actually started his mindset series, so he's kind of putting his masters in sports psychology to use, and he started last week, uh, another one coming up this week on the performance, or the psychology be- behind high performance athletes, so a lot of the lessons they implement this are phenomenal lessons, and I think they're very, very useful to listen to and kind of internalize. What I like about them is they're very consistent, so that's something I like I like to do when I'm kind of learning things is look for consistencies across other successful people, so if a lot of successful people mention these kind of uh, either leadership lessons so in terms of like coaching people is how i would imagine that or running something or if elite performance athletes talk about a consistent kind of trait they think about or a consistent method they implement and things i i really kind of take note of that and there's a lot of these things in this book for example that are kind of in line with what ross says or kind of the leadership lessons or coaching lessons that are kind of in line with for example uh, jocko willick's book uh, i can't remember the name of that is but it's it's a, a leadership book as well so Big, big plus about this book is the information in it is great. And I thoroughly enjoy the information they place in it. So they talk about things like, um, you know, they have a great, the first chapter kind of talks about cleaning the shed. So it talks about the captain and the vice captain of the All Blacks team. So they go and clean up the changing room and the surrounding equipment before they leave. So after everyone else leaves, so the highest kind of ranking members of the team will clean up the gym. And then they kind of move on and talk about how they approach their mindset. You know, they talk about stuff from the mental skills coach. They talk about, you know, why it's important to work hard. They talk about things like 1% of like 10 different things gives you a large increase in performance. They talk about that kind of constant mindset of improving everything possible so you can possibly be the best possible that you can be. So I don't know how many times I said possible there, but you get the point to me. So there's great information in this book. It's a great kind of summary of what the All Blacks did and it's the cumulative effect of all the information is very very useful to listen to so like it's really really valuable information and the all blacks if you don't have interest in rugby are basically one of the most successful teams in the last uh, probably 100 years in rugby realistically so they have a phenomenal system and it's great to hear kind of what they did to implement that and build the best team they can uh, now there's obviously no team is perfect so they have their downfalls well that's a matter of a rugby opinion rather than the subject of this book review so Big pro point about this book is the information is very, very solid. So I feel like if you're the kind of person who's willing to listen to information and you want to get the best information possible, I definitely think Legacy is worth a listen. Couple of downsides about this book that I'm not a huge fan of and it makes it a little bit kind of difficult to listen to. Sometimes it zones you out and I think it actually devalues the information they're putting into this, right? So frequently throughout the book, they'll talk about, they'll kind of quote random businessmen or, you know, random successful athletes. So they'll kind of quote... um, like Muhammad Ali or they'll quote like uh, Michael Jordan or they'll quote uh, some successful businessman or you know author or something and they'll, they'll kind of mix it in with the lessons so it'll be a relevant quote nonetheless right so it'll be relevant to the information they're trying to get across or that particular lesson in that chapter so it's broken down into 15 chapters but I feel like it doesn't really add anything to the story or the narrative so you're kind of left with a random quote so they'll they'll give great anecdotes with the All Blacks and what happens during their team and they'll talk about uh, a particular player probably never playing for the All Blacks again then the two main of our fly halves get injured and this particular player gets called up and then they go ahead and he wins with the winning penalty or whatever the particular story was or that particular anecdote so 
but then they'll add in like a random quote from someone and i feel like it kind of distracts you from it so you listen to an interesting story and if you're a rugby fan it's very very interesting to listen to these stories and then they'll kind of uh that anecdote will be very nice it'll be or it'll just be a compelling anecdote to listen to a little kind of a little bit of lore of rugby history and then they'll talk about their lesson and the kind of thought process behind what those coaches at the time were doing or what kind of system they're trying to implement but then you'll get this kind of quote you'll kind of be like you listen to the quote it'll be a good quote but it kind of distracts from that kind of narrative of the whole book and i feel like it kind of takes you out of it a little bit for no particular benefit i feel like they've been better off than really instead of trying to appeal to a broader audience just honing in on that all blacks kind of community and people who wanted to see what they did you know so that's kind of one of the downsides of this book right so if you're not a rugby fan if you're not uh even if you're like if you're a casual rugby fan or anything like that you'll get a lot out of the book but like many of you watching mightn't be huge rugby fans you might not have any kind of level of respect for the all blacks or any level of appreciation i should say for their performances so a lot of these lessons might be well they have good lessons and good information you might not appreciate them or give them the kind of uh respect or kind of gravity that you might give these lessons coming from a different sports team or a different elite at least so kind of the last kind of not negative but it's just a personal opinion of mine what i really liked about ross's book last week for example is that he had a great narrative right so he had a very very consistent story throughout the book so you had a compelling reason to listen to the book and pay attention but he had also a compelling reason to kind of give value to the lessons he was trying to tell you so when you were listening to what he was talking about you kind of say okay that makes sense and then he'd talk about a particular trial during the swim and then you'd say okay and then he'd talk about what kind of lesson he was trying to teach you at that time using this particular anecdote but then these anecdotes all tied together kind of surrounding the whole swim whereas there's no particular narrative in this uh the legacy book so there's no particular continuous story so there's lots of cool anecdotes which i feel like are, are, are very very interesting to listen to if you like rugby in any way but there's no story start to finish you could basically listen to any random chapter in any order so this is again not a knock in the book but again this is kind of if you like a story kind of style book or you like a narrative driven teaching book i feel like this kind of tries to appeal to both so it tries to give you kind of something like jordan peterson's 12 steps to a better life or whatever it's called this kind of has information reading out like a textbook is such imbued with some anecdotes and I feel like it just sometimes it doesn't work great. I feel like if they kind of really honed in on that uh, all backs narrative, forgot about the other quotes and then kind of portrayed their information as they did, I think the better book would have been better served. Uh, funny enough, and this is not often I would say this, but I feel like this book would be better adapted to some kind of Netflix style documentary and um, look... If you, I, I love reading books. I totally enjoy reading books, but sometimes I think some things be better, would be better performed with a kind of a, a, a visual effect to these. I think because if you don't like uh, rugby or whatever, if you don't have any particular appreciation for rugby, a lot of these lessons won't hold the same value for you. So, I would say, kind of take away with this book, great information, very consistent information, very useful information for you as an athlete, or you as a coach, or even you as a person, probably a manager. So it's worth listening to the whole book. It might not be particularly compelling, but I feel like the information is useful enough that it is worth listening to the book if you have a credit free for Audible. So I hope you enjoyed my kind of rant regards to the book. Again, you may have loved this book. Uh, I liked the information and I would certainly recommend it, but as such, I say I didn't particularly enjoy it a whole lot. So again, it's just my opinion. I know these, this book got great reviews, so it got a lot of good reviews from people. And that is because the information is quality. It does give you a good look into All Blacks if you are a rugby fan again that's the big crux of the situation but i feel like they should have honed in on that but anyway i hope you enjoyed this book review next week i'll probably do uh trials of a professional weightlifter i would say uh, i just need to kind of reread some of it and make sure i kind of have the correct kind of uh kind of talking points and stuff i want to highlight on that so i'll probably do that one next week so if you're looking for a weightlifting book might not be a weightlifting book you've ever heard of before so it might be worth to listen again i appreciate all the comments likes all that good stuff because it really helps the book or the the video and um, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.